Assembly and disassembly of a Flender NRPEX coupling. This tutorial was carried out using the example of a three part NRPEX ARN6 NEK coupling size 217. The coupling consists of three main components, along with the two flexible disc packs that compensate the misalignment. The tutorial demonstrates the fitting of two different hub types. It shows the assembly of the standard shaft hub connection by means of a parallel key, as well as that of an optional shaft hub connection by means of a clamping hub. This video solely serves purposes of visualization. For the assembly of the respective coupling, the instruction manual is binding. The respective prescribed personal protective equipment must be worn during all installation steps. For example, the appropriate heat resistant safety gloves, installation gloves, and safety goggles. Other protective equipment may be required in accordance with local safety regulations. Please observe the information in the corresponding assembly instructions. Moreover, for easier fitting, you can use an induction device to heat the hubs. You will need a suitable assembly paste and a brush to apply it to the shaft ends. A torque wrench with the appropriate sockets is additionally necessary. Further required tools and equipment. A ratchet socket wrench including the appropriate sockets. A caliper. A cleaning agent. And if applicable, a support cable for the crane. A soft face hammer can be used to facilitate disassembly. Keep the instruction manual on hand in case questions arise. Assembly of a shaft hub connection using a parallel key. After the shaft ends and hub bores have been cleaned with the appropriate cleaning agent, the fitting of the hub parts can begin. We will first show you the assembly of the standard shaft hub connections by means of a parallel key. To facilitate this procedure, Hubs with a cylindrical bore may be heated to a maximum of 150 degrees Celsius. With the brush, apply assembly paste to the hub bores and the shaft. Place the hub on the shaft and slide it into the required position. Ensure that the set screw is screwed out far enough so that it cannot collide with the parallel key when the hub is placed on the shaft. Tighten the set screw to the prescribed tightening torque. Assembly of a shaft hub connection using a clamping ring. The second hub on the coupling in this tutorial is equipped with a shaft hub connection using a clamping hub. At delivery, the clamping ring on the clamping hub is only loosely pre-mounted and the tensioning bolts are finger tight. In the area of the clamping ring, the clamping hub bore and the shaft must be absolutely clean and oil free. Slightly loosen the tensioning bolts and pull the clamping ring away from the clamping hub, just enough so that the clamping ring sits loosely on it. Place the hub onto the shaft. Take care that the hub is precisely positioned so as to avoid jamming it. The tension bolts are now tightened one by one. The first time around use one half of the tightening torque. You will find the exact value in the corresponding instruction manual or in the drawing. In the second and all further rounds use the full tightening torque. When the tightening torque has been reached and the clamping ring lies completely against the clamping hub flange, the clamping hub component is correctly installed. Alignment of the units. Move the machines that are to be coupled into position. Observe the prescribed shaft displacements. Shafts that are connected by a coupling never align exactly, but have a certain offset. Misalignment in the coupling results in restoring forces which place an undue strain on the adjoining machine parts and, when excessive, can lead to a premature failure of the coupling. By precise alignment after assembly, the restoring forces can be minimized allowing greater misalignment reserves in the coupling during operation. 
assembly of the disc packs and spacer. When assembling the coupling, the spacer is positioned between the hubs. Use a crane for this if possible. In assembly balanced couplings, each coupling component is marked with a multi-digit number on the outside diameter of a flange. When installing the spacer, ensure that these multi-digit numbers align with each other and can be read easily from a single perspective. The disc packs are to be slightly radially pre-stressed during assembly. This allows you to easily insert the first close-fitting bolt through the flange bore and the disc pack. The second and third close-fitting bolts are slightly harder to insert through the bores. To facilitate the insertion of the close-fitting bolts, please proceed the following way. Insert the close fitting bolts alternatingly into the bores of the flange and the disc pack. Observe the insertion direction of the bolts. The heads of the bolts must lie against the flange. Screw the collar nuts onto the close fitting bolts without the catching rings. Tighten the collar nuts to draw the close fitting bolts onto the flange until the collar nuts come to the end of the thread of the close fitting bolts. Unscrew the collar nuts. Then place the collar nuts along with the catching rings on the close fitting bolts again, tightening them to draw the close fitting bolts as far as possible into the flange until the heads of the bolts meet the flange. Now pre stress the collar nuts. Tighten the collar nuts one after the other. The first time around, apply one half of the tightening torque. The second and third time round, apply the full tightening torque. Alignment of the coupling. Measure the distance between the coupling flanges at multiple points at the outside diameter. Choose measuring points between the bolting points and by measuring multiple times, identify the measuring points with the greatest distance between them. If the measured distances fall in the range between S1 minimum and S1 maximum, as shown in the graphic, the machines are aligned with sufficient accuracy. You will find the necessary drawings and acceptable offset values in the instruction manual in section Alignment Values. The coupling can now be put into operation. Disassembly of the disc packs and spacer. To disassemble the spacer and the disc packs, loosen the collar nuts one after the other. Remove the collar nuts, the catching rings and the close fitting bolts. Light blows with a soft face hammer to the ends of the close fitting bolts facilitate their removal from the flange and the disc packs. Before removing the last bolts, brace the spacer. Remove both disc packs and lift the now exposed spacer out of the coupling line. Examine the hubs, the spacer and the disc packs for damage and protect them against corrosion. Replace any damaged parts. When assembling the coupling again, observe the notices in the chapter on assembly and startup in the corresponding instruction manual. This video solely serves purposes of visualization. The process description in the instruction manual is binding.